Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Jack and Letty and Sione, and we are here to do our second meeting. Happy Juneteenth. It is June 19th, 2020. And um, I am going to hand the floor over to Letty, and she's start going to start talking about EKGs and everything she knows about that good stuff. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, so um, I have this book that I got from my EKG class that I did like back in 2018. Um, I still really like the book. I downloaded a PDF. So if you guys want the PDF for that book, I can send it to you. And um, in here, so at the end of every chapter, there's like different EKG rhythms. And then it'll ask you, um, let me see if I can find an example real quick. Sorry, my feathers are heavy on things. Uh, but it'll look like this. It'll give you a rhythm. And then it'll ask you, um, what's, the, what's the rhythm, what's the rate, what's the PR interval, what's the QRS duration, and you know, that's like stuff you can measure. And then um, that's really over helpful. here, what I would focus on if you get this book is the table. So these right here, that's it tells you the characteristics of each of the rhythms. <clears throat> And like, I wouldn't really too much about, worry too much about the other stuff that's in there about the rhythms because it goes into more detail than the Hoffman book. And I'm not sure that we do need to know all those extra details because it is like a lot. It'll be like the rhythm and then sub rhythms under that or something like that. So I would just kind of look at the characteristics for each of the rhythms. So like, what's the rhythm? What's the rate? What are the P waves? What's the PR interval? And what's the QRS duration? Yeah. So if you guys want this one. EKGs or ECGs, excuse me. Oh, I'm so old. Well, EKGs and ECGs, basically the same thing. <laughs> I know. I got to get used to the, get with the times. It's terrible. Um, ECGs made easy. Thank you. That's actually really helpful too. Yeah. Just to broken down like that. And, and by the way, like, Letty is the go-to person <laughs> for like, if you, I'm not joking. She saved my butt last semester with that book that, that you mentioned that, um, the study me. guide, the study guide book. Yes. She had the study <laughs> guide book for Taylor that she found that nobody recommended. And oh, yeah. I'm like, this thing is literally made for Taylor. And it was beautiful because it helped you understand exactly how to start grouping things. And yes, it does require more. So you don't have to do all that extra stuff. Like you don't have to write all that out, but it helps you kind of get an idea of what to look for. And that just was so helpful. So yeah, she's good at finding that stuff, which thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Then um, I also have my notes typed out that I did for that class. So if you guys want those too, let me know. Like, I ask if you guys want them because I don't know if people want to be spammed with my emails like a million times a day. <laughs> so, because I do send out a lot of stuff. Like, I'll be looking up EKG videos and I'll send them to my friends and then, you know, like stuff like that. So, or whatever PDFs that I find online somewhere. I'm like, oh, this looks important. I'm going to send it to you. Absolutely. You can absolutely include me in that list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. Actually, where did you take that ECG class? I took it at Glendale Community College. Oh, awesome. Oh, it's online? No, it wasn't online. It was in person class. Oh, okay. And um, we we really went like like pretty intense into that class with like the material, the rhythms and everything. So mm -hmm. what we are doing, the rhythms that Ms. Miner said that we have to know for med search is easy compared to <laughs> what I had to know so wow. learning it another time you know it's really kind of solidifying some of that information and kind of like breaking it down um I'm, I'm not going to explain this next part but you should know like um like so you have the rhythm of the EKG right and then know when um atrial depolarization repolarization and ventricular depolarization and repolarization occur during that time. So like when do the atria contract, when do the ventricles contract and stuff like that. And then um, I forget what else, but yeah. So like know when each of those things, like how they coincide with each other, basically. It's explained 
in in the book in chapter 29 and it'll tell you like the p wave is um atrial depolarization and then you have your qrs complex which is ventricular depolarization yes and then the t wave is ventricular repolarization there's one thing i wanted to add to that too um there's in chapter 28 and i can't remember everything about it if you want more details on that chapter 28 has the phases it's like phase zero through phase four am i right letty Yes. You probably remember that much better than I do. And so it's in chapter 28, if you're looking for it, and it'll go through that. Um, and there's something, I forget, there's another thing that comes right before that in the book uh, that's important. So yeah, and it talks about all that depolarization and repolarization that Letty's talking about in like super detail. So that helps sort of supplement that as well. But yeah, 110%. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, oh, sorry, well, what? Uh, you said that we have to know rate and rhythm of the ECG? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then know the, the action potential of like how everything happens. So I think in the EKG book, it might actually go into more detail than the Hoffman book. Um, I, I don't remember. But I don't want to waste too much time trying to look for it right now. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. So you're saying action potential is important to know as well. Action potential, the electrical pathway, the um, like what happens during the P wave, the QRS, the T wave, and stuff like that. Thank mm -hmm. you so okay. much. Okay, so then we have our EKG paper. Okay, so. A lot of people kind of get a little bit mixed up on this. So you're going to have, <laughs> let me see if I can find a picture <laughs> for Let reference. Letty knows. I'm sitting here and I, I told her, Sione, I feel bad. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I understand what I'm reading, but you give me this <laughs> thing. And I look at it and I'm like, graph paper and my eyeballs are swimming. So it's, it's not going well. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Somebody <help> translate this. <laughs> All right. Okay, I found a good reference. <laughs> awesome. It's a lot of chocolate, bro. My brother's making a smoothie right now, and he's just taking the chocolate syrup, and it's just going forever. He's like, <laughs> antioxidants, antioxidants. That's what I'm shooting for right now. <laughs> chocolate <laughs> antioxidants. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to get a bigger picture of what I found. Okay, this will have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right now. Okay, so right here, we have large squares, right? And yeah. then we have our small squares. So the large squares you're gonna see on the EKG paper are like basically bolder pink lines, okay? Those are going to outline the large squares, and every large square is 0 0.20 seconds. The small squares are 0 0.04 seconds, okay? And then, so left to right is going to be time in seconds. Up and down on the graph is going to be amplitude, yes. and that's going to be measured in millivolts or whatever this is. It's millimeters. <laughs> yeah, according to Hoffman, it's millimeters, but whatever. It's well, not, I like millivolts better. Millivolts sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like measuring things in volts. Somewhere along the line, we had joules, and I was like, ooh, fun. <laughs> We're getting into that now. <laughs> so the reason that we have to know um, what each is measured in on the graph is like when we measure the P to the P, when we measure R to R, when we measure the PR interval, when we measure the QRS, like, is it wide? Is it narrow? Is the PR prolonged? Is it within the normal limits? And stuff like that. So that's mm -hmm. why, um, like, we need to know, like, the seconds and everything for this. So, like, PR interval, a normal is going to be 0 0.12 seconds to 0 0.20 mm -hmm. seconds. Our oh. QRS normal is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.11 seconds. And then um, if you guys remember for our class, um, they, they said that EKG calipers are optional. So the way that we would use the EKG calipers for this is we would 
like kind of take where two, like let's say there's an R here and an R here, right? From the QRS. And then we go and measure to the next two and the next two. So if they're all within the same distance, that's gonna be your regular rhythm. If they're not all within the same distance, that's irregular. So that's how, um, or that would come in handy, the EKG calipers basically. That makes a lot of sense, thank you. Um, let's see. And then, so the book has a, a little section on how to do EKG interpretation. So first we're gonna find out the rate. And then um, the way that we find out the rate, like, you know, just by looking at it, and this is going to be, um, it only works with regular rhythms. So you're gonna give you a strip, right? Every strip mm -hmm. is going to be six seconds long. And then in that strip, you're gonna count how many R's there are in there. So if there were, for example, six R's, right? So that means six QRSs. You're gonna multiply six times 10 and that's gonna give you your beats per minute. So if there's six, that's gonna be 60 beats per minute in a six second strip. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, it makes um, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, let me see if I can find an example. Yeah, pictures are great. <laughs> So in this one. Oh Lord, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let me get my glasses. Here we go. <laughs> I look at it and then my eyeballs scramble. Somebody save me. So let's say in in this strip right here, let's say this was six seconds, right? So I'm gonna count one R, two R, three R, four R, five, six. There are seven R's in this strip. Therefore, mm -hmm. this is going to be 70 beats per minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what I mean by counting the R's. And then they have different ways of figuring out the heart rate. And the other two are either counting small squares or counting large squares. Yes. And then here, if we're counting large squares, let's see, there's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there's four squares between the R's, right? So if it's four large squares, you're gonna um, divide the number by 300. So you're gonna have 300 divided by four, which is a number. <laughs> I don't know it off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm like, don't, don't make me do math on the fly. <laughs> we got you, we got you. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so then that's going to be your beats per minute if you did it counting the large square. See, that's a little bit more accurate than just 70 beats per minute. But yeah. now let's say we are counting small squares. Counting small squares is actually going to give you the most accurate beats per minute. Okay. So let's see. And that would be like every single line, like vertical line of small squares, right? Just so I make sure I understand. Yeah, so like if this is four boxes and then every single box has five small squares okay. in a row, that's gonna be 20 small squares. Got it, and okay. Um, yeah, so some of these have a, a little bit more or less than 20 squares. In between, like this one has exactly 20 small squares in between, but this one doesn't. Mm -hmm. So you would just count the number of small squares. Hypothetically, I'm gonna say that there's 19 small squares. And then that's the example in the book. So you're gonna do 1500 divided by 19, and that's gonna give you your beats per minute, which would be 79. Mm -hmm. so so that's the most accurate squares. methodology. That's the most mm -hmm. accurate one? Okay. Yeah. Is that the one that, that you think they're probably gonna have us use most? Yeah. Just guesstimate? Okay, cause like, I was wondering about that, you know, like, what are they going to want us to do? Count the QRSs or count the squares? Um, where, where do you think we're headed <laughs> based off your experience? <laughs> based off my experience, how we calculated the rate in my class, we just counted, like, how many R's there were on each okay. EKG strip. Mm -hmm. If it became a regular, then... Um, 
then that would be like a little bit tricky because the R's are not going to be like directly like even from each other. So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So it becomes less accurate the the less um, regular the rhythm is basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're counting the squares, you might have already answered this, and I'm really sorry to have to be a pain in the butt and ask, but where do we start counting from to make sure, like, it's not, because obviously, um, I, I realized I was misreading that even in my own understanding. I was like, oh, I count all the squares within the six, the six second run. I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Where do, yeah, thank you. <laughs> where do I start counting from? <laughs> okay, from, where so to where? from the first QRS, is that where? Yeah, so like let's say your R right here is in a square, you're gonna count the square after it because you wanna do in between, not okay. like including. So like Oh, okay, thank you. That yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> Sorry. Visual is okay. a thousand words for me. I told you I was like, watch me have to sit there with the teacher for like ten hours and ask a million questions about this. Oh, no. <laughs> I can, oh here we go. I can make this bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna like move this on the side. So see how this R right here is in this square? We're gonna count this one right here. So mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, right? And then this one is kind of like in here. So I'm just gonna count this one. Okay. Right on the line. So I'm just well, gonna I count it with it. Route. Yeah. Oh, so one, two, you're counting in between them. Yes. Oh. And then are you only doing that for that one? Oh, I see what you're saying now. Now it makes like a whole bunch more sense. I mean, now I wouldn't, like if you want to count all the small squares in between every R, go ahead. But I would just pick, <laughs> I would just pick two R's. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you just count between, oh, I get it now. Thank you so much for blowing that up and showing that because now I understand what it's talking about. That makes sense. You just count between one R to R interval and then divide that into 1500, right? Yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that was so helpful. <laughs> okay, so, you know, with the rate, we want to find out, is it a regular rate? So 60 to 100 beats per minute. Is it slow, less than 60 beats per minute? Or is it fast, more than 100 beats per minute? So, you know, just looking at the rhythm, sometimes you'll be able to tell if it's slow or if it's fast because of mm -hmm. how many um, R's they're going to be in there. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to find out if the rhythm is regular. So this is where you can take your EKG caliper. So you're going to be like, okay, you know, I'm going to put my calipers here and then I'm going to take this distance and I'm going to measure it against every other um, R's. So then I'm going to take them over here and measure it against this one. Is it the same? Is it shorter mm -hmm. is it longer so that's how you're going to find out if it's regular or not and then mm -hmm. you're going to count you're going to measure the p to p intervals so i don't don't take my word for this but i don't remember if we count from the top of the p or before and then measure it to like the other P here. I'll take a peek in the book and see if I can find it while you're talking because I'm not yes. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it might so, have been it, but I don't remember. You're going to see if the P to the P are equal. So like, let's say like this is going to be normal sinus, right? So this P to this P is, let's yeah. see, one, two, three, four, zero point eighty seconds, right? And then to this one, it's another 0 0.80 seconds. So that means that our P to P's are equal. Oh, okay. Now, let's say my next P was right here. So that one happened a little bit earlier, which mm -hmm. I will talk about uh, later with the premature atrial complexes. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at our R's. So it's going to be this right here, from here to here. So is that equal along the EKG strip? And then you're going to look at the P waves. Are they there? So is there a P wave for every QRS? Or is the P wave inverted? Is it 
like flat, yeah. not like non-existent? Is it after the QRS? Like what's going on with the P wave? Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna check to see if we have a QRS. So do we have a QRS here, here, here? We're also gonna be looking at T waves. So we wanna make sure that all of our waves are basically there. And then we're gonna look at our intervals. So the one we usually look at is gonna be the PR interval. Mm -hmm. So even though it says PR interval, it actually goes up to the Q. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's gonna measure from the beginning of the P to the beginning of the QRS. And that's mm -hmm. gonna be your PR interval. And that should measure 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds. Okay, that's the normal. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. And you can find that um, on, if you're, if you're curious as far as where to find that, page 564 goes over intervals. Uh, oh. Am I right on that, Letty? I think I am. Yeah, that's where I kind of wrote it down. It starts to go over them, and then I summarized it, and it's in there. So I just wrote PR interval equals... QRS interval equals and QT interval equals. Um, it's there mm -hmm. on that page. I can't find the other thing. I don't see it in the book. It could be there, but pff, I can't find it. So that'll have to be a question we ask. <laughs> well, if we don't have to measure like how many, like where it starts or where it ends, I would just, you know, take it from the top of that P to the top of that P. Like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And then measure that along the strip to see if they're going to be all equal. For sure. And then the last two steps, I mean, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory from like the stuff that I mentioned earlier. So basically, is there a P wave before every QRS? And is there a QRS after every P wave? I don't know why they mm -hmm. say that. I feel like that's the same thing. Um, but yeah. And then it goes into calculating um, heart rate, which we just explained. So the first method was counting how many QRSs there are and multiplying that by 10, and then counting the large squares, and then we divide by 300. So 300 divided by the number of large squares, and then 1,500 divided by the number of small squares. So that is 20. so helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the visual and the explanation. That really made it. <laughs> Yeah. It drove it home for me, just on that, just practical. <laughs> <laughs> Letty, uh, future nurse instructor sitting right here. <laughs> actually, I, I, I would actually really like to be a nursing instructor one day. Ever since I was in third grade, I wanted to be a teacher, so. <laughs> oh, this is perfect for you. You're doing such a great job. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys are both super smart. I'm, I'm always happy to work with both of you. Thank you so much. Aww. No problem. I'm happy to work with you too. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna kind of quickly go through the rhythms, okay? Yeah. So normal sinus rhythm, uh, sinus bradycardia, and sinus tachycardia. They all have, sorry, what's going on? So from here to here, they're all going to look normal, except in bradycardia, you're going to have less of these, right? And then in tachycardia, you're going to have more of these. So the rate is going to go up for tachy and then down for brady. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing abnormal going on in this area right here. Just means that one is going to be slower than the other or faster than the other. That's it. So let's see sinus tachy I'm going to go into premature atrial contractions mm -hmm. let's see if I can find an example here yeah this is where I'm going to have to study a lot because knowing it's one thing and identifying it is just a whole nother for me <laughs> yeah Oh, okay, so it's the same thing as arrhythmia. 
Um, let me see if I can make this. Quick. Premature atrial contractions is when the P wave is firing a little bit too soon. Yeah. Am I ready? Okay. That's correct. Um, Yay! So it's going to be like normal and then everything. And then all of a sudden, right here, out of nowhere, a pacemaker cell near. What is this? <laughs> it looks like part of the human body is taking over your screen. <laughs> WebMD act. Oh, oh come on, God. WebMD. Like, you don't get enough attention. <laughs> For real. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> okay. So... Out of nowhere, a pacemaker cell near the SA node decides it's going to fire before the SA node has to fire. And that's where we have our premature atrial contraction right here. So it's going to happen a little bit too soon. And then it's not going to be like the whole rhythm, like just that. So it's going to be here and there. So like there's one here, there's one right here. And then after every premature atrial contraction, you're gonna have a compensatory pause. So the heart is going to try to reset itself. So you're, we're gonna have this pause right here. So notice right here, this pause is a little bit longer than this one right here. Mm. So you're gonna have the premature atrial contraction was gonna to happen too soon. It could be like morphed with a T wave. It could happen a little bit after the T wave but it's gonna be right there. It's gonna to happen too early. And that's why um, we, we can also use the calipers here. We're measuring the P to the P, right? So if I measure this normal P to this normal P, it's gonna, this normal P right here is gonna be longer than this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. That's where those calipers really come in handy then is for, for tracking that kind of stuff down. Yeah, so okay. it kind of helps with like figuring out how normal um, or abnormal a rhythm is basically. Okay. Because it can look like it might be normal, but then once you take your calibers and you start measuring things around, you're going to see like, hey, this one is out of place. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's see if I have anything else to say about this one. Uh, so in the book, it does mention that the PR interval can be normal or prolonged, and the QRS is less than or equal to 11, 0 0.11 seconds. It can be wide or it might be absent. All right, now sinus tachycardia. I mean, wait, I already did that. Yeah, that one, yeah, that was <laughs> it's okay. Hey, there's too many of these things out here. <laughs> you start diving in, you're like, oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, so now we're going to look at atrial fibrillation. Where's a good one? Okay, let me get over there. I kind of like this one here. Oh, Lord. Oh. We are at our 40 minutes. Are we? We're okay so far. I have not been kicked out and we're good to go. Okay. Well, I guess we should Firstly, just keep going until we get kicked out, I guess. It gives me a warning. It'll give me a warning on this end and I will absolutely let you know when it tells mm -hmm. us it doesn't and then just randomly kicks us out, but I don't think it's going to. Mm -hmm. Or if anybody else sees a warning, let me know. I think they're having mercy. They know we're trying to do something smart with this. <laughs> <laughs> like we'll give, we'll give a few extra minutes to think. <laughs> <laughs> so for atrial fibrillation, I would definitely read a little bit more into this one because this is the most common rhythm. Mm -hmm. And um, there's what actually more in that thing. Look at it. It looks like electrostatic activity. <laughs> I'm sorry. My brain cannot comprehend this. Help me. <laughs> okay. So with atrial fibrillation, so for what I noticed from the book is that you're going to have your QRS and then you can kind of tell that there's a T wave in there. So here's a T wave, here's a T wave, here's a T, here's a T, and everything in between just looks like a bunch of static, like you said. Yeah, what is that? Are those called artifacts? It's been a long time, so I don't really remember what that is. Is that bad? Is that a bad sign? What is that? Like When you see things going like all over the place like that, I have no uh, idea what that means anymore. I do not completely remember, to be honest, but I do okay. remember that artifacts happen on EKGs. Uh, it can happen from like maybe muscle spasms 
okay. or the leads are not placed on right, or there's like uh, other kinds of activity going on besides the heart rhythm. Mm -hmm. Thank Maybe, you. Um, I think, okay, I'm not sure, but I think hyperkalemia or hypokalemia has something to do with it. Oh, okay. I know it does with QRS waves and mm -hmm. oh, I'd have to go back and look at the book because I don't remember. Um, the QRSs are bigger, right, Letty, for hypo or hyperkalemia? The electrolyte imbalances create larger QRSs than normal. Isn't that what we read? Or Yeah, no? wider, wider QRS. Wider. And then one of them is going to be like a peaked, um, either a T wave or a P wave or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And digoxin toxicity, I believe, creates a U wave, which you never want to see, like, ever, right? Yeah, U wave, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, people don't really know. I'm not sure if this is correct, but I, apparently people don't really know why U waves like happen. Okay. But sometimes they're there, sometimes people have them, sometimes don't. And they like be careful with the U waves because you can actually mistake a U wave for a P wave. Yes, yes, very true. And that's oh. why I'm looking at this and that's where I struggle to be completely honest. And I don't know about you guys, but I look at that and I'm like, how am I supposed to tell if there is any other sort of wave activity because it's all like staticky do you know what I mean like I don't know somebody help me figure this out <laughs> <laughs> I am not an expert in this <laughs> so <Help> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just gonna like repeat what the book says on this yeah for sure it's what I like put together so we have no P waves right Okay, we just see a bunch of things going up and down, but they don't count. No, P or T wave? P. P? Okay. Yeah, P waves. <laughs> P, P is the one that comes first, and I guess that the easiest way to remember that would probably be like P as in pre, like a prefix. Mm -hmm. That might be an easy mnemonic. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Good. Oh, good. At least I came up with something helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It says that multiple pacemaker cells are firing independently electrical impulses. So that means that different like cells, they're all deciding, hey, we're going to fire on our own. We're not even going to follow the rules. Okay. And that's why we get all of these little staticky kind of waves. Because it's the chaos, not, basically. It's chaotic. Okay. So oh, then okay. the, and, and, and when we see those ups and downs, we're just going to assume that that's chaos. If there was a P wave there, it would be a lot more dramatic is basically the point, right? And a lot more smooth. Yeah. So a normal P wave is rounded and it's upright and it happens before a QRS. So okay. those are the three characteristics for a P wave. And um, there are certain leads which... Uh, I don't know if the teacher will go into this, but in lead two, the P the P wave is upright, but in other leads, the P may not be upright. It might oh my be goodness. upside down. But just know that in lead two, <laughs> which is what we see here, <laughs> is going to be upright. Well, that's important to know. No wonder they suggested use lead two. <laughs> Everybody's on the same page. Well, actually, for a lot of these, they tell you to use leap two to look at like how the rhythm looks, and then other yeah. times they will tell you to use um, AVF or leap one. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, like, cause the cause our book it just says use leap two. Did you see that? Yes. So and the book totally in right Hoffman then. only says leap two, but in the EKG okay. made easy, it'll actually. Uh, tell you to look at a different lead. So real life is going to be a lot more different than this book. Thank you for that clarification, Letty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hope real life we are able to discern at least some of these rhythms when we get into the hospital. <laughs> We're going to well, be you can think, um, I guess I thought about a, a nice way to relate this, relate atrial fibrillation to something that we already know, and that is the riders. So they do whatever they want, and the cells here do whatever they want. They're all yeah. over the place. Oh, yeah. I love that. Thank you so much, Sia. <laughs> that is a good way to remember that. Yes. <laughs> the more we have mnemonics in our the heart. <laughs> the more of these mnemonics we have, the better, because you know it sounds like mm -hmm. a joke and, and fun now, and then we get there and watch us remember that when the time comes. You know, that'll be that random thing that sticks out. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. 
We're still okay. good. No warnings yet. So keep on going. Okay. So for this one, our atrial rate is going to be 300 to 600 feet per minute. The ventricular rate is going to be variable. So it's going to depend on like how many there are. So if I had to kind of guesstimate what the ventricular rate is here, I would count the R's in the six, six second strip, right? So if I did that, there'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 times 10 is going to be 100. So this is about 100 beats per minute in terms of ventricular rate. Okay. And then, so our P waves are not going to be identifiable. The PR is not going to be measurable. And our QRS is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.11 seconds. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then I also wanted to compare the atrial fibrillation to atrial flutter because in flutter you're going to see the difference, like what I mean by here in a bit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for going over these with pictures because mm -hmm. I don't know, but it really helps. It helps oh, a lot. Problem. Thank you. Like, I try to help any way that I can. It's amazing how much there is to know about this. Hmm. Okay. So in atrial flutter, you're gonna have what's called F waves. I can't make this larger than it is. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so you're gonna have F waves right here. So here, here, and here, those are F waves. Okay. okay so for flutter. So think, uh, how do I say it? Well. You said fluffy the, clouds earlier, right? Or something. Yes. Uh, yeah, F for fluffy, fluffy Like sometimes they'll be rounded, sometimes they'll be kind of pointy, but I like to think of it like fluffy clouds. So mm -hmm. you have, you know, right here, <clears throat> these uh, fluffy clouds, basically, which are going to be your F waves. Okay. And then see how like here, it's kind of like uniform. Yeah. But here it's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be how you're going to be able to tell the difference between fibrillation and flutter. Oh, so flutter is a little bit more organized than fibrillation. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. See, like you would think just like by the word flutter would be all over the joint, but I guess not. Okay. Thank you so much. That helps a lot. So I just wanted to point that out because, you know, like, let's see on the test. Is there like a P or a T wave? Is there even a T wave in there, Letty? Like, is there a T wave in Flutter? Like when we're looking at that, like this uh, one of those spiky teeth looking things <laughs> count as a T wave? They don't necessarily count as T waves or like. What T -waves. is that? So it's just gonna be like, they're just going to be called F waves. It's, it's okay, so we call them F waves. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Thank you. So, so these are as complexes and F waves is pretty much all that's there. Yeah, so these are going to be F waves with QRS complexes. Oh, that's helpful. Thank you. Yes. It's all starting to make a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. So the atrial rate for this one is going to be 240 to 300, and our ventricular rate is also going to vary. The, there's going to be no P waves. You're going to have this sawtooth flutter, which is going to be our F waves. The PR is not going to be measurable, so you know there's no PR there to measure, and our QRS is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.11 seconds. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go into premature junctional contractions. Uh, let's see. I like the example that the book had. Okay. So basically, the book had 
uh, three types of key waves. So there was one that was upside down like that. Then there's the absent key wave. And there was a key wave that happened after the QRS. Yeah. Let me find the page that way. Uh, Sione, it's page 576. Oh, okay. Yeah, and for anybody else who's listening, it's page 576 in the book, in the Hoffman book. You'll find the different notes there. That I actually found kind of interesting, so feel free to... Explain. So right here, I kind of found uh, yeah, some yeah. pictures. Hmm. Okay, so the P wave right here... So basically what's happening right here is that um, the AV node is firing off first instead of the SA node. And then, so if, you, if we have our AV node here and our SA nodes up here, right, we have it starting here, that um, electrical like pathway has to go up and then down. So it's going up instead of everything going down. So if we started at our SA node. Everything's supposed to be going down. So SA to AV to the bundle branches, right? Yeah. That's going to give us our upright P in lead two. So as you can see, it's, everything's labeled lead two here. But because it goes from the AV node up and then down, you're going to have that inverted P wave mm. because it's not going the usual pathway that it does. Okay. It's going another way. It's going up, so it's not supposed to be going up. It's supposed to be coming down. Okay, that makes so sense. That's a retrograde um, P wave, in a sense. Yeah. And then right here, we have no P wave. So basically, it didn't go up to the SC node. It just went straight down to the ventricles and then did its thing. Right here, it contracted the ventricles right and then it went up and then it did its thing okay so like i i don't really know how to thoroughly explain more than this just you know knowing that in junctional premature junctional junctional complexes you're gonna have inverted p a p after the qrs or no p wave that's actually really helpful thank you you, you did a great job. And then um, in the book, it said, or in the EKG's Made Easy book, it mm -hmm. said that um, the P waves are going to be inverted in leads two, three, and AVF. Okay. Okay. So uh, if I can, in a bit, I will also explain what I mean by those kinds of leads. And then the PR interval is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds if there is a P wave before the QRS. So it's like right here, because it's before the QRS, you can measure the PR interval. But here, there's no PR interval, and here, there's no PR interval. Okay. And then you're going to have your QRS, which is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.11 seconds. So all of these we have, we can measure QRS. Okay, and now I didn't draw an example for myself of premature ventricular contraction, but there are different kinds. <laughs> oh, and here is a inverted P wave right here after the QRS. So that would be premature junctional contraction. Okay. And in the book, you have different kinds of uh, premature ventricular contractions. So you have uh, unifocal, multifocal. So unifocal is going to be where there is one ventricular pacemaker cell on its own, and that's going off, right? That's going to be unifocal. And then multifocal is going to be like basically from multiple different pacemakers. And then okay. you're gonna see uh, two different kinds of rhythms on your EKG. So, and then uh, you can have two PVCs in a row, that's a couplet. Three PVCs in a row is a triplet. And then, um, 
If every other beat is a PVC, that's by Gemini. If every third beat is a PVC, that's trigemini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had like one paragraph on that, and I was like, oh gosh, there's like 80 important things in this one paragraph. Somebody save me. <laughs> okay. Jack, do you know the page number for oh, yes. ventricular contractions? Yeah, uh, it's page 578. 578. The Hoffman text, page 578. Yep. Let and, me get a book real quick. Yeah, and they're all right there. And it's figure 29.22. It goes over all the ones that she just said. Um, and like I said, it's literally like just this little tiny paragraph, and it lists exactly mm -hmm. what she said. It's just like, and it's compacted. And then the whole rest of the page, it draws them out. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. One of them is literally like doing like this huge, like I, I've probably seen it as like doing like this huge dance. Like I'm, I, I don't even know. Like I said, the, reading these is not my forte. It's going to take a while. Glad we started early. <laughs> I know. Okay, so in your Hoffman book, like Jack said on page 578, there's all kinds of yep. premature ventricular contractions. So if you have your book, I suggest you go and get it right now and mess them up to that page mm -hmm. as you're watching this. Okay. Okay. So let's see. So in figure A, I really wish there was a way I could pull this up. I know, <laughs> right? It's tough. It's okay. It's okay. Actually, I might be able to do it a different way. If I can do Zoom on my phone and use my phone to show everybody the images. Let's see if I can join like that. Yeah, just let me know and then I'll, I'll add you in. Okay. That's a brilliant thought. I didn't ever thought about that before. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to stop share while I look at your uh, info to join. <laughs> Let me know when you send it. I don't see anything on my end yet. All right. I'm going to, I'm putting in the meeting ID right now. Oh yeah, for sure. Sione, how are you doing? Do you have anything you'd like to add while we're like stuck in the interim? Um, um, about ECG? About whatever you want. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so here we go. I, yeah. I see you. I've admitted you, Letty. Go ahead. Sue. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I was uh, reading about infective endocarditis. Ooh, so, cool. Yeah, and then um, I was learning about risk factors. So um, risk factors include people um, that are over 60 years old, immunodeficiency, IV drug use. So people that do heroin are at risk for infective endocarditis, diabetes mellitus, and um, also um, it affects the mitral and or um, it affects the mitral or aortic valves. And there's a question that asks uh, the nurse determines which patient is at greatest risk for developing IE. Yeah. And um, I'll share my screen. Actually. Yeah, go for it. Thank you so much. Yeah. That gives that gives us all a yeah to regroup and get. Mm -hmm. So, um, what oh, do you think cool. the answer is for connection check thirty point two for the risk factors? Okay. This risk for developing IE. A twenty year old student undergoing a dental procedure. A thirty five year old man with a past medical history of IV drug use. A sixty five year old male heart transplant patient on immunosuppressive therapy undergoing a colonoscopy, a 70-year-old female with heart failure with an intravascular access device for home infusion. And, yeah, you, and um, you said IV drug use was the big deal, right? Yeah, um, I, so I think it's actually C. Um, I don't know how to check. I'll, I'm going to try to find where to look. 
Are you still there, Sione? I think we might have lost you for a second. Is everybody still there? Or am I the only one still here? Oh, please don't be my internet. No, I look good on my end of things. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh. My internet decided to take a powder. Uh, let's hope that everything got saved because I will punch the hacker or whoever it is in the throat. That's <laughs> I don't care if that's on recording. I, I'm so sick of this. Go ahead. Please continue. I'm back. Okay. Oh, okay. So um, got lost. Yeah. Oh, Lucky, you can, um, you can continue. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go and sharing. share my screen over here. I wonder how to do this. Okay. That's not what I'm trying to do. There we go. <laughs> oh, wow, that worked. <laughs> okay. And then you're going to have to share screen from that screen. Because <laughs> I can see you rotating over there in the little corner. <laughs> I'm trying to get it all like the same here. Oh, that's so funny. That's so cool. But well, look at right. that, that works too. <laughs> so right here we have um, a premature ventricular contraction and right here as well. So there's two right there. Okay. And let's say that it, would ha it was happening here and it was happening here and it was happening here. That would be a trigemini. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then right here we have another one and then we have this one. So that's going to be multifocal. Okay. Because this one is different from this one. So they're firing from different places. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Yeah. So in the figures, it says that B is multifocal, A is unifocal. So see how these right here are both the same? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then those are unifocal. Mm -hmm. And then right here, we have two in a row. Okay. So these are going to be couplets. Mm -hmm. And then right here, we have three in a row. So they're going to be triplets. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's taking me a while to grasp this. Okay. <laughs> and then right here, let me see if I can get closer. It looked like a crazy sine wave off of GarageBand, so please tell me what that is. <laughs> okay, so let me see. E was by Gemini, so that means that every other one is abnormal. So right here, right here, right here and right here. Why do we have two different like things going two different directions, if you don't mind me asking? Is that always a thing with by Gemini? Uh, no, so this is from two different leads. Oh, is that why we've got it swimming? Because I was like, by Gemini in two different lines, that would be easy to remember, but no, no, we have to make it all. <laughs> okay. No, so this <laughs> is more to do with so right here we have, yeah, this is two different leads. Thank you for the clarification on that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I just said that, but okay. <laughs> All right. And then in this last one right here, we have our trigemini. So we have one right here, and then this is our, our third. So one, two, three. Okay. And then one, two, three. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Got it. Can you show me by Gemini one more time? I'm so sorry. Where the yeah. ones are. So right here, this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's every other one. Yes. Okay. Why does my book look different than that in my face? No, it's not probably, but for some reason, oh, it makes sense when you're pointing at it and then my eyes scramble it. It's just yeah, a bad see? time to have dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> see how in the book it's upside down? What's that? It's upside down right here. Oh. It goes down and then it goes up into the T wave. Okay. Yeah. And then right here in another lead. It's dipping, yeah. Yeah. One. That one will take me a while to get done. That's okay. You keep going. I'll have to start these another time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ugh. So I I'm just 20 going times. to stop sharing on my phone now. That was a brilliant plan. 
<laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> well, just so you know, since the meeting ended itself and started again, we probably got another good 40 minutes to go. <laughs> <It's> hey. just, <laughs> I just hope it saved everything we did in the beginning. I'm going to be so mad if it didn't. I'll be like, um, well, that, that was sad. I think you guys can record on your end as well. What's that? I said hopefully you didn't get screwed up because I joined with with my phone. No, it's not your fault. If it's anything, <laughs> trust me, my internet's a jerk. But I believe you guys have permission to record on your end. Can you record on your end? I tried to enable that. Uh, um, yes. Okay, good. So you guys can always feel free to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just in case one of our internets goes down. <laughs> Note to future sessions. Uh, <laughs> I need a backup. <laughs> okay. And then um, in the table in the NKG's made easy book for the characteristics for the premature ventricular contractions, it's going to say regular unless interpolated PVC. Interpolated means that it's a PVC between two normal QRSs. Okay. So you're going to have a normal, an abnormal, and then another normal. Mm -hmm. okay. That's interpolated. So the one in here, this one, is going to be the, the PVC between the two normal ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's interpolated. Okay. And then the rate is going to be within normal limits. And then your P wave is going to be absent, retrograde, or after the QRS. There's going to be no PR interval. And the QRS is going to be greater than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds. And the T wave might be opposite of the QRS. Okay. I already did. Did I, did I already do ventricular tachycardia? I don't think so. Did she do that, Sayona? I don't think so. Mm. Oh, um, no. Okay. No, yeah, we haven't gone there yet. I think we just started with... Uh, that big pile of premature ventricular contractions and got lost in that mess. <laughs> well, me anyways. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try and hold this up to the screen so you guys can look at this part of the book right here. For sure. <laughs> and that's what I've done too, don't feel bad. It's sometimes the only way to go. So right here we have the rhythms, the two rhythms right here. So see how the one on top looks a little bit more uniform? Then the one on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the one on the top is monomorphic. The one on the bottom is polymorphic because it's firing from two different like places. So mm -hmm. see how there's some tall ones and some short ones right there on the second um, strip? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> with ventricular tachycardia, you can't really tell that there's a P in there. You can't really tell that there's like a T wave or anything. So what you're mainly going to see with that one is just like um, mostly Q, what looks like QRSs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the difference is one is pretty much the same height and that's called monomorphic. And then when you have different heights, it's, you said, I have to look at the book myself, polymorphic. Yes. Just to recap. Okay, thanks. Because I looked at that, and honestly, unless somebody explains it to me, I'm lost. So thank you. Because I was like, mm, I don't know what the difference is between that. It all just looks like a bunch of blobs to me. <laughs> so, so monomorphic, it's firing from one pacemaker cell. Poly, meaning multiple, it's firing from multiple pacemaker cells. Making so that's why they're different um, heights and stuff. Oh, that makes a lot so of sense. It has some are like this, some are like this, and then it just goes up and down. That makes so much sense. Thank you. And then um, our ventricular rate is going to be one, 101 to 250 beats per minute. And then our P waves are going to be absent or have no relationship with QRS, meaning that um, we might have like a P wave here and there, but there's like, it's not like in relationship to the QRS. Okay. So there's no P wave before the QRS, before every QRS, and so on. It's just doing what it wants, when it wants, and it doesn't matter. It's yeah. not communicating. Okay. We have no PR interval, and then our QRS is going to be greater than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds. Mm -hmm. And um, you also cannot differ differentiate between the QRS and the T wave. 
yes. So the PQRS is greater than or equal to uh, 0 0.127? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then um, in the book, it also mentions that ventricular tachycardia is basically three or more premature ventricular uh, contractions. Okay. So three or more PBCs, and they're going to be fast and wide. Mm -hmm. So you know how like in the top one right there, those QRSs, they look pretty wide. Yeah. You know. Okay. Now we're going to go on to ventricular fibrillation. So the difference between ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia is that fibrillation, it's going to be smaller wavies in a sense okay. than um, the ventricular tachycardia. So tachycardia is going to be like more like, you know, up and down like this on, on the EKG strip. And then the ventricular fibrillation is going to be like little tiny like if they look like little tiny silly or something like that. Yeah, no, I see what you're talking about. I noticed that and I was like, does that matter? So thank you for clarifying that. And for those listening, it's page 579. Page 579 shows both of them. And then you can either have coarse or fine uh, ventricular fibrillation. Okay. And, then, and is coarse just kind of more uneven and then fine more even? Is that the difference? So quartz meaning that like the the waves are a little bit more pronounced than fine. So oh. fine, like if you had like uh, I really don't know an example to compare it to right now. Oh, that's okay, but that helped a lot. That made sense. I got it. We're good. Thank you. And then also, um, this particular type of fibril ventricular fibrillation is a lot more deadly from what I'm seeing. Right? It's like. Yes. Super deadly, like it's an immediate, like, uh oh, spaghetti o deadly. Lethal. Kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Lethal, immediately treat. That's what I put in my notes, like, <laughs> exclamation point. <laughs> so, this one, okay, so the next rhythm I was going to talk about is asystole, which means there's basically no electrical activity. In asystole, mm -hmm. you have to know if what the rhythm that you are seeing is, in fact, true asystole or if it's fine ventricular um, fibrillation. Okay. So you have like, um, because if it's fine ventricular fibrillation, that means that shock is advised. Okay. okay. If it's asystole, no shock is advised. You okay. have to do like compressions to get, you know, some sort of rhythm so that, you know, when you do defibrillation, you have something to shock. Right? Yeah. So those are going to be the two things. And then um, with ventricular fibrillation, absolutely first thing you got to do is CPR and uh, defibrillation, and then you administer medications. Okay. Um, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. The two types of medications can be vasopressor or antiarrhythmic. Okay. And I believe... Correct me if I'm wrong, the two examples in the book that are given is epinephrine for the vasopressor and amiodarone for the antiarrhythmic. That sounds familiar. Uh, I'm looking at epinephrine right now, but I know I read about what you're saying. And uh, yeah, it is amiodarone and epi. Which page did you find that on? That is going to be in the table. I'm at 581, but that might, yeah, the, there might be tables are a better way to go sometimes with these books I'm finding. Otherwise it's, it really uh, I'm in the table in page 582. Oh, thank you. Okay, perfect. So what I did for my notes was yeah, yeah. I took like a very like kind of summary of what was in that small section under each rhythm. Yeah. And then I wrote down the causes and the treatment. So like those are like the basic stuff right there. That's then perfect. I went to the table and then, you know, you have your asymptomatic and then your symptomatic rhythms. And I did both. And I included, you know, the symptoms, medical interventions, nursing interventions, patient teaching. And then, of course, the characteristics from the EKGs made easy book. That's perfect. Um, that, so I, I did it like this. I don't know if you can read. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Oh, so, okay. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. 
It looks like a bunch of blubber on my side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's kind of interesting. One thing I will mention about the Hoffman book, um, mm -hmm. when it came to this, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like Letty's mentioning, these tables have more information in them. And it's a little mm -hmm. bit better organized than the actual text. Although the text has details in there that you have to have as well. So it's kind of... Mm -hmm kind of a catch-22 in that respect but there's some details like I said I was reading in the text I'm like it doesn't say it but you go over to the table and it's there so you kind of mm -hmm. have to just read everything and know everything mm -hmm. I hate saying yeah. that but I'm like know everything oh <laughs> sorry guys that's what professors would say <laughs> I know and I'm like why why does it have to be after like that really helps me <laughs> <laughs> <I love everything. laughs> Such a great teaching skill. If you know everything, but if you do that, you're actually going to fail. Like you, you can't know everything. <laughs> yeah, there, there's really a lot of information and you just kind of have to like, in a sense, pick and choose what you yes. feel is more important. Mm -hmm. The so. most important facts and consolidate it. You have to consolidate it. That's why I suggest, and which Letty just illustrated, consolidating it to a one pager. If you can explain mm -hmm. what you're doing in one page, then you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the only rhythm that I actually um, did with more than one page was, I believe, atrial fibrillation. Yes, the, the one that's most common. So I did two pages on that. Yeah. Front, yeah. It's like one page basically front and back. But for yeah. every rhythm, like I did one page. I tried to keep it to like, you know, one side. Yeah, it, helped, huh? it helps to do that. Like, um, and like mm -hmm. I said, that advice that I got. I, I keep forgetting his name. I know I referenced it once, but it came from a, from a astronaut. <laughs> so I was like, mm -hmm. Ooh, this is brilliant. I'm going to apply this skill. And it started working. Uh -huh. So that's, that's where I got that from was boiling everything down to a one pager and yeah. in the space. He's an astrophysicist. He's a genius. He offers master classes, which I cannot afford, but it was in the commercial. And I went, oh, I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to get back to the rhythms. So in asystole, I also want to mention that you can have P wave asystole, where your rhythm, you have only P waves, and they're going to be equal distance apart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the only thing about asystole, basically. And then we're going to go into first degree AB block. So in the first degree AB block, it's basically going to look like what a normal sinus rhythm looks except that every PR interval is going to be prolonged okay that is the only difference so interesting the main thing to remember for this one is that every PR interval is prolonged and that was for which one again the first degree AB block thank you oh. sorry I haven't had a chance to get to these yet so that helps so your your Rhythm is going to be irregular. The rate is going to be with a normal limit, so 60 to 100 beats per minute. Okay. Your P waves are going to look normal. There's going to be one before every QRS. Your PR is going to be greater than 0.20 seconds, and your QRS is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.11 seconds. Okay. So it's just elongated. Is it? Um, I'm like looking at the book, and I'm like, what on earth is this? So this one's not that big of a deal, right? Unless someone's actually having a problem and then you just treat it, treat it if there is a problem. Am I right? Uh, there oh. is no specific treatment. So you would just treat the cause. So some of the causes for heart blocks are number one, acute coronary syndrome. Under that umbrella, you have unstable angina, acute, um, non non STEMI. I forgot what that stands for. I forget too. I hear my mother say it all the time. She's a nurse. I'm like, what would you? It's, would you uh, it has to do with um, like we look at STEMIs uh, for people that have had like a myocardial infarction. Yes. So basically you can tell by a person's rhythm if that person in the past had a heart attack. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually really interesting too. And depending yeah. on the time it's frame, like evidence, like yeah. in their EKG rhythm, it's really cool. I learned that from an EMT. <laughs> that's you know what? My mom took the EMT class too. So you guys are like wavelength thing right now, right? Like that's where she told me that too. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's so interesting. 
I miss I my class. <laughs> If, you know, all those classes come into play, you know, you can never learn too much. It, I mean, it's amazing. Okay. And then uh, the other causes for heart blocks were uh, electrolyte imbalance and medication toxicity. Okay. So it, it uh, I don't know which one's specific, but there were some that like kept coming up, like the Joxin kept coming yes. up for medication toxicity. Yeah, I saw that. So I don't know if this would be like one of the medications that could cause um, first degree AB block. Okay. But I yeah, have basically, no idea. It would be more helpful. Basically, for this one, like there isn't really a lot to do. You just do vital signs. You assess for signs and symptoms. You do a 12 to kg, and then you assess for other kinds of causes. You know what, uh, for those listening who want to follow along about just a simple chart for AV block, page 587 in Hoffman goes over a uh, summary of heart blocks, mm -hmm. which I know nothing about, but there it is. <laughs> oh, so okay. we'll give the floor back to Letty on what on earth a heart block is and <laughs> explain. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain what a heart block is, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a block chalk or something, right? Okay. Um, I forget, but I'll have to read up on it and let you guys. Mm -hmm. know. Well, like it's a problem. That's about all we know. <laughs> so, okay. That's that's why we're student nurses. Yes, we are yes. learning all the time. I have an excuse. <laughs> have an excuse so if anybody to... out there knows the answer to this question, please put it in the comment. Put it in the comment below. <laughs> All right, so the last one that um, I'm going to go over is the bundle branch block, which is not in the Hoffman book. Oh, okay, okay thank you. So I'll stop looking then. <laughs> oh my God. This, one, this one is in the EKGs made easy. Let me see if I can find the specific page number in the physical book. I don't know if the pages are different in the PDF, but it's going to be... Let me see. It's going to be in chapter nine. Okay. Okay. And then it's going to talk about, um, in this one, it's going to be page 255. I don't know if it's going to be different in the PDF. Okay. But basically, um, what I wrote down, like something quick, and then um, I don't know if I can pull up my notes real quick as well, but basically, you have right bundle branch block and a left bundle branch block. So think of it like the turn signal theory, okay? You turn your turn signal up to go right. You turn it down to go left. Okay. Okay? Okay. So right here, this one, these are facing down. So they're going to be from the left bundle branch block. And then oh, okay. these are all facing up right here. Those are going to be right bundle branch blocks. Awesome. I love a good mnemonic. You know that's how I roll. So <laughs> that helps. And then for this one, the QRS is going to be greater than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds. And um, it's considered an incomplete right or left bundle branch block if the QRS is 0 0.11 seconds to 0 0.119 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I know that sounds a little confusing. Yay, for more math to learn. So, so it's like 0 0.11, but not yet 12. <laughs> <laughs> no rounding allowed, clearly. <laughs> Let me see if I can get my EKG notes real quick to show you my notes on the bundle branch block. For sure. Um, but I also wanted to mention real quick that a good way to study for med search that I've seen a lot of videos, you get the Saunders and Clex, and then you compare your book notes, your class notes, your PowerPoints, and um, to what's, like you compare like everything basically together and then you highlight um, what you find is most common among the three. So your textbook, your PowerPoint notes, 
and the Saunders and Cleggs. Saunders and Cleggs. Okay. Yeah, that was a tip from uh, Sarah RN from Registered Nurse RN. Okay. That's her cool. how to study for med search. That's really helpful because yeah, it's kind of tough to wrap your mind around all of this, as we all know. So Saunders and Cleggs, and that's like a specific book we can buy. I'm assuming. Yes. Uh, I actually. Let me let me get my book so I can show you. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I actually have it right here. Oh, you have it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you smarty pants. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. Sonder <laughs> comprehensive review and collects are an examination. Can you read me the ISBN? Would you mind? Yeah. Thank you yeah, so okay. much. Thank mm -hmm. you. And actually, so there's a code that comes in it, and if you type that code on the website that it gives you, it gives you even more practice questions. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's, um, okay, ISBN is 978-0-323-323. Yeah, uh, so after 323, it's 35, Three five. Eight four. Eight four. One five. One five. Okay, so mm -hmm. I have nine seven eight zero three two three three five eight four one five. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And it's a really good book because it's um it's the latest edition. It's the eighth edition. Okay. And yeah, it was actually uh, written in twenty twenty, so it's up to date. And it really it gives really good information. And um, Professor Snyder said that this book will really help you. Oh, really? Okay, that's good. So Snyder mm -hmm. recommended we can put like a yeah asterisk <laughs> on that. <laughs> we should seriously contact them and be like, what are your recommended study tool books? So you know what I mean? Like it's actually Snyder approved. <laughs> if she ever goes and watches these, I swear. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I found my notes on the Bundle Branch flag. There isn't much more on it. Okay. Uh, than what I already said, but I'm going to share my screen anyway, so you can see. And thank you so much, Sam. I really, really appreciate mm -hmm. that. You're welcome. Okay. So here we have our Bundle Branch frog. You know, like I said, it's 0 0.12 seconds or more. Mm -hmm. And then, um, let's see. A QRS that is 0 0.10 to 0 0.12 in this book is considered incomplete. And then right here we have positive and negative. So like positive meaning up, negative meaning down. So remember we turn our left si our turn signal down to go left and we turn it up to go right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, don't worry about these <laughs> exceptions. Like, totally ignore that. <laughs> that goes into more depth stuff. But these are my notes on the bundle branch block. That'll probably end up being something we get taught in lecture. Just watch. You know, all those <laughs> things that are not in the book are going to end up there. We're like, where did you get that from? <laughs> Outer space, some other planet. I don't know. Thank you so much. I wish I could make notes that looked that organized. It's, it's never going to happen. <laughs> It's never gonna happen, guys. <laughs> so the other books I also wanted to mention were these. Oh, um, yeah. Is this I like the is this like the fundamentals hack, hack the fundamentals book except for med search? Yeah. Okay, what is this? this one is like uh remember the test for success book that we were gonna get and it was gonna give us like test taking strategies. Okay. I have success books for a lot of things. One of them is Med Search. I have not looked for this yet and I just ordered it. <laughs> How did you buy it or did you rent it? Huh? Pharmacology. Did you buy it or did you rent it? I, I bought it because oh, yeah. I I actually I love books. Me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I like to keep all of my books and uh, my room is overflowing with books. I have nowhere to put them. <laughs> like I'm that person that goes to the store is like buys like 10 new books, but already has like 20 like unread books at home. <laughs> Same here. Oh my gosh. I don't know like how to explain it. You get a high off of just buying books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I still have nice books camp. that I like to reread again because they're just so good. I know. <laughs>
I'm but, a textbook geek. I mean, it's bad. I have like, my whole house is filled with books and most of them I, I, I think are textbooks. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Nonfiction books, I'm, I'm addicted to them. It's terrible. Just see like my computer, my computer programming stash of books that I have yet to read through completely. <laughs> For the app yeah. I will one day build. And then the other two things I also wanted to mention were the Patho flashcards and the form flashcards. Okay, Patho, mm -hmm. do you know who made those? Uh, no, but I can check for you real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe Kaplan? I, uh, wait, uh, what about Kaplan? Oh, I was just thinking maybe it's Kaplan that makes the flashcards. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think so, though. Let me check real quick. For sure. Thank you. And you said that you, you heard from other students that they were really helpful, right? I actually bought uh, yeah, this is a good myself. Oh, did you? Did you get a chance yeah. to check them out and they're pretty good? I like them. Let me let me grab, I have some on my desk, so let me grab them and show you what okay. they look like. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything that can help me break this mm -hmm. down, because it's just like a big massive chunk of information, you know what I mean? Yeah, I have this one. A friend gave it to me. It's the ATI Med Surge book. Oh, that sounds good. ATI Med Yeah, it's really thick. Big that is. From ATI, I'm yeah. sure they made something that big. Yeah. Um, I hate to bother you about this again. Do you have the oh, I see it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it gives um, It has questions and it has information in it. So more condensed information. So this one, okay, the ISBN. Um, so this is what it looks like. Oh, oh that's okay. cool. It's from it's Valerie like, I. Leak. Leak? Mm -hmm. I didn't see the last part. L-E-E-K? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. And that's for Patho? Yes. Okay, and good. also for Farm. It's the same person. Oh, awesome. okay. Yeah, I couldn't find mm -hmm. ISBN. So I'm going to take out a black card for gastro. So they are in order by system. So you have gastro, you have endo, Euro, neurologic, you have immune, musculoskeletal, nervous, cardiovascular, respiratory, sensory, you have dermatologic, mental health, women's health. Wow. So they are pretty organized then. Yes. And then here you have oh, the picture. Card. Hey. And then, so it's kind of like a little something basic about it. And then in the back, you have a little section for pathophysiology right here. Mm -hmm. And then it tells you like important stuff like to look out for right here. Oh my gosh. And then it tells you like things to keep in mind. It has the assessment and diagnostic findings, complications, and then medical and surgical treatment. Mm -hmm. And I like yeah. these because, you know, um, cause you know, I commute for quite yeah. some time to school so what I can do you know pull these out and you know like oh, okay you know, quiz wait while you're driving well I do a lot of things while I'm driving which I'm not going to <laughs> see on here because <laughs> <laughs> we don't even get targets on YouTube <laughs> oh nobody report me <laughs> I'm not going to see me being my criminal justice behind she'll stay silent <laughs> Um, so actually, something interesting that I learned is if you get a DOI as a nurse, you lose your license. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Drinking is just not <laughs> anybody's time anymore. Like, I don't drink and drive, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I, I'm going to be straight up. Like, if I drink anything at all, I'm literally making sure I'm not driving anywhere for, like, two days. <laughs> <laughs> and I know. Like, so yeah. Everyone's like, Jack, seriously? I'm like, no, I'm thrilled because what if my liver doesn't clear that out? Like, I know that might yeah. sound paranoid, but I I'm know. Like, what if it doesn't? You know, so I'm like, if it's going to be a long, long weekend, which is rare these days, and I have nothing to do, I'm like, okay, maybe then. Maybe then. Maybe, but probably. Oh, not. you know what's nice? Yeah. Going to Sequoia. National oh Park. yes oh my god everybody all my friends are like some like everybody what? i mean everybody is going to sequoia right now and i'm just like i want to yeah. go what's sequoia yeah it's I open. Am out of this loop what is happening it's yeah. a it's a huge forest it's a national park it's really pretty oh, it has really gosh. tall trees i love yeah. trees yeah me too 
We should go. Who wants to go? Yeah. <laughs> <Let's get Papa. laughs> We make like a little right. media road trip. I know. <laughs> yeah. So this is a heparin uh, card from the Farm Flash, right? And then you mm -hmm. have, um, like, this would be, uh, what do you call it, the generic name, and then you have your trade names, I think. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And then in the back, it has the class, indications, the action, adverse, and side effects things to keep in mind like for patient teaching and then what to assess so oh that's really awesome thank you so much for sharing that mm -hmm. I, that's super duper helpful that really consolidates it a lot were they super <laughs> expensive or were they like reasonable everything's expensive no, 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 no. i think <laughs> they were reasonable for the price they're like around 30 something bucks each okay on amazon i feel like it's a lot more cheaper than barnes noble yeah yeah, yeah, I buy all my stuff on Amazon, and then what I look mm -hmm. out for is the new and used products. So yeah. when they're new and used, that means that like a customer got them, they got opened, or they got damaged, or whatever, and then they got returned, but everything is still there. And that's always going to be a couple bucks cheaper. Yeah, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Because those look definitely worth everybody's time, so I would strongly yeah, I, I really like them. They're good to reference back to, like, for... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The diabetes ones, I actually drew little pictures for what the patho, um, the card said for the patho wanted. And it kind of really helped me like kind of solidify what diabetes type one was. Yeah. And then, uh, so maybe next week I can show you what little drew doodles I did. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Oh, okay. That'd be great. That's totally great. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh, Siona, thank you so much for sending that down. It's so, do you get that book from the ATI testing? Is that where you got it from? Mm, I actually, someone gave it to me, but yeah, that's oh, okay. where he got it from. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And Letty, what we're talking about is because um, I think you had actually popped off over to go get yeah. the flashcards. So let yeah. me fill you in. There's an what? ATI med surge book. Look at that thing, which it's oh, like, yeah. who would have thought? Yeah. And what is that like a test bank kind of thing or what is that? Um, it's uh, it's like the Saunders book. So it has questions and then um, condensed information. Okay. Yeah. And that's for everything med surge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only med surge. that'll yeah. last so for the next adult remember. medical surgical nursing. Okay. And how, like, uh, you said someone gave that to you? Yeah. So you don't know how it's much they paid? Um, $53. Yeah, we're all like, oh, we're envious. We want that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Well, so maybe I they have, have it for. Oh, I've seen it on Amazon for cheaper. I think. Oh, it is on Amazon. Yeah. You have seen yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen Amazon. Yeah, ATI products on Amazon. I forgot the prices, but I would assume they're a lot cheaper than the website. And what was the? Um, okay, so so that we get the right thing again. We have ATI Med Surge. Is that all that it says? Or what does it say as the title? Mm -hmm. RN Adult Medical Surgical Nursing. Adult Medical Surgical Nursing? Mm hmm Okay. Is it 11.0? Um, it's edition 9.0. Thank you. Yeah. I'm writing that down. Yeah, I think they came, it looks like they came out with two newer versions as well. They have 10 and they have 11. Oh, I don't know what the prices oh. are on these. Let me check How much those. are they going for? Let's I'm going to be broke, you guys, for the rest of my life. Until <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I'm broke. I can't even tell you right now how much money I spent on all the freaking nursing stuff. And uh, supplies that like I just bought. Like 80 stimulus checks. <laughs> Sorry. <I know. laughs> Oh my gosh. Let's see. So the nine is paperback, 10 bucks. Get out of oh. town right now. It's used wow. and it's 10 bucks. And Letty's then, like, bye, Jack. I'm buying it right now. See you later. <laughs> There's <laughs> That's new why you from, read faster than me. I'm slow. I'll just ask you what's important out of there. <laughs> they, have, they have new from, uh, let's see, 2414, and that's included shipping. Shipping oh, is four bucks, yeah. and then tax is like three or two seventy. Okay. 
Which is not too bad. No, that's not bad at all for a book that big. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a humongous yeah. book full of information that's going to last for a really long time. And that's ATI crazy. is a very reliable source. Um, yeah. Like I recommended on when you guys go to the the YouTube. Um, I told Letty, I was like, I didn't spam everybody with this, but I uploaded a few different things, like stuff for nursing 101 students, like a breakdown of how to understand the Davis drug guide, because that thing was scrambling my brain. And then um, just different things as I go through uh, the chapters in case it's easier for people, you know, to understand it that way. But um, I forgot what I was going to say now. What was I going to say? I don't know. Anybody know what I was going to say? Um... We all lost our train of thought. <laughs> yeah, like my brain fell off. Yeah, the Swap cooler yeah. turned off and the sound distracted me and ADHD went out. So we're done. <laughs> I was going to say it's gone now. <laughs> there was a point to that. I promise. It, it tied into something. What? I don't know. Oh, well. Yeah, Is there there's actually a maternal book too. Maternal and newborn nursing, um, ATI. But yeah, I'm on the website and the 11.0 edition is $53, but maybe, maybe it's on Amazon. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Thank edition 10. Oh. Let's see, they have new from 32 bucks. And then edition 11, they have this one. Oh, they have used from 45 bucks. Yeah, it's more expensive because it's the newer edition. Yeah. That's what I was mm -hmm. going to say. I remember now. It was about ATI testing. Um, you know, they made teas. So like I said, I recommend it to anybody who hasn't taken it yet. I, I actually bought the tea package and I know it was kind of a hefty price, but it really, 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 really paid off in my score. So, yeah. you know, ATI yeah. is very beneficial at consolidating things. Do you mind me asking what you got on your teas? No, not at all. I got a 91.3%. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, and uh, and thank you. That I I contribute that my <laughs> I contribute that to a few <laughs> different things. ATI's uh, test packet, you know, that two hundred and fifty dollar humongous thing, that was very very helpful. Um, and then also oh. crash course, that was amazing. So for like anatomy, oh. physics, chemistry. And then also just some old textbooks on, you know, chemistry or, you know, physiology and anatomy whenever you need to look something up in, in hard format. But mm -hmm. those were the, the things that pulled me through that test and got me that score. So mm -hmm. um, my, my recommendation too always is, and I tell this to everyone, if you're going to take a test, and I got this from my mother, go to whoever made the test. So ATI made T's, so go to ATI to study for T's. Do you see what I mean? Um, yeah, Kaplan is yeah. gonna. Oh yeah, I heard Kaplan makes an class. Really, I heard it was Pearson View, but are they switching to Kaplan? Because I wouldn't be surprised. Because Kaplan makes real estate. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not sure. Did Kaplan make my real estate, or did I just say that and I'm not supposed to? Because that pro probably I have a real estate. <laughs> life. It's an act. Well, for our school, we're doing Kaplan. So Miss Parkinson. Actually, yeah. um, I asked her, you know, for extra testing material, which she meant she uh, recommended Lippincott and yeah, Lippincott and then um, Q and A. And then um, she said to get in the hang of knowing how to do Kaplan tests because we're, we need to buy the packet every single semester. And every single semester, we're going to be taking those Kaplan tests. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, our, okay. you know, and then like you guys thought, our points actually depend on that. Oh my gosh, that was awful. And then we had to take ours a semester, I mean, not a semester, but a month early. And I was like, um. <laughs> yeah. Extra, extra. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, you, um, yeah, don't forget to do questions from Kaplan because we still have that when we bought that. <laughs> That's yeah. a good point. I used yeah. it for like maybe all of three right days. Is it still active? <laughs> right now? Uh, um, it's, I believe so. It may be. I don't know. I, I haven't yeah. gone back. I know we're going to have to buy it again, right? Like each semester you have to buy it. We have like another. Yeah. So I guess mm -hmm. we'll buy it for next semester. We'll get two tests, right? One for med surge one and one for. Yeah, I'm attorney. Right. Yeah, I'm assuming. I was like, baby stuff. <laughs> like, if you if you went in and then looked at the different kinds of tests that they had for um, Kaplan, there's like different categories in there you can like mm -hmm. test yourself on. Okay. 
Okay. And they yeah. have two for oh, fundamentals. That's, that's right. You're right. I remember that now. It's coming. Yeah. Um, do you know what kinds of what chapters we should study for maternal slash newborn? I did email the teacher. I know I know two of the two of the professors and they haven't gotten back to me yet. Perfect. Yeah, I emailed Miss Jacobs and she hasn't gone back to me and I'm kind of yeah. afraid that part of it might have been because like maybe I sounded like too uh what was the word I used, Jack? <laughs> Demanding. Sure yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, because I was like, you know, if you could just give us this, that would be great. Thanks. Like I didn't mean to sound like that. Oh no, it's okay. I, I think she appreciates the fact that you care so much to prepare. Look at it that way. <laughs> she does. She does. Yeah. She's actually finishing her doctorate degree right now. So I think that's what's going on. So I, oh. <laughs> I think that's why. Oh my gosh. Hard. Yeah, no, she's working wow. hard on getting her doctorate done while she runs CNSA, while she does all the other classes. So I think oh. that's what we have in the back from her yet because otherwise I'm sure oh. she would have emailed you guys back. Like she, oh, you know. What is she getting her doctorate in? Uh, I think nursing education. If I'm, I'm, but don't quote me because if I'm wrong, I'm, I could be wrong. But I believe it's nursing. <laughs> oh, oh, cool. I could be wrong. There's something like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. But she They're going to change had... NP program to doctorate. I don't know what year, though. What's that? They're going to change um, NP programs to doctorate at a Oh, yeah, that's year. right. I, I got and really excited about that. Because I'm trying to go for NP, and then you know it's not just yeah. masters anymore. Now they now we can do doctorate. Oh, so, yeah. so you think I can go ahead and get my masters in like you know informatics, and then go and get my doctorate in and in, in nurse practitioner. Yeah. Oh, good. Because yeah. I was hoping for that was the route I was planning on. That <laughs> I was like, they'll invent that by the time I get there, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like you know whatever you want to do, like well, there's, options, there, there's right? a lot of stuff out there, like. For me, I'm actually going to try and use my psychology degree when I do NP. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Like, Are you going to do um, psych, psych, psych? Psychiatric NP? Like, um, I don't really know how to explain it, but I do want to, like, emphasize mental health with my patients because, mm -hmm. you know, mental health is, is super important and, yeah. like, they, they are starting to address it more in healthcare. You know, they give surveys and they ask you, you know, mm -hmm. like, how are you feeling? Have you had any suicidal thoughts? You know, stuff like that. Basic surveys mm -hmm. for mental health. You know, I, I know that I've had them when I go to my doctor's visit, like, or a new doctor for the first time, they always give me a survey or mm -hmm. I get a survey when I go to different kinds of doctors, like maybe specialists or, you know, stuff like that. And I think that's great because, you know, nobody really paid too much attention to mental health before, you know, like doctors would just kind of do your thing with your physical health, not so much mental. Yeah. So I like how they're starting to like really incorporate that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. me too. What about um, you, Fiona? What are you looking at? <laughs> oh, um, Where are you heading off well, to? Um, I would, I'm, I, um, I'm considering CRNA. Oh. I actually, yeah, before I did my prerequisites, I was actually thinking I wanted to do that very for awesome. nursing school before, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very awesome, very awesome. So we all have That's some awesome. dreams here. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. It'll be fun to yeah. see what we all, what, what, <laughs> what we decide. I know, we'll have a nursing uh, school year reunion. <laughs> oh that. my God, that's going to be so awesome. Yeah, we can go do it yeah. in Sequoia. <laughs> <laughs> We're all gonna be talking about like, oh, yeah. hey, remember when we had to do oh, yeah. nursing school during COVID? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I know. Um, yeah. uh, we all need shirts for that by the time we're done. Seriously, it's all right. going on. We don't even know what's gonna happen next semester. It's insane. Actually, um, I don't know if you guys heard, but the president is actually pushing for us to, I guess, go on campus. Oh, good. Yeah. Did, did you hear that? We now have to all wear masks everywhere and it's statewide. So. Yeah, according to Newsom. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I get to suffocate some more. But at the same time, I will say that every time I took it off, I ended up catching some god awful virus. But I'm like, well. <laughs> so nursing students are going to be the only students on campus on in the fall, probably. Pretty lonely. <laughs> I really, I really don't know. But, you know, if they mm -hmm. do it, kind of like blended classes where they're only allowing 
I guess some people to be on campus or maybe that's what I was thinking because we also have air airframe mechanics and things like that and automotive mechanics and I mean yeah please like you can do that online you have to have hands-on just like with what we went through I mean it was we were really lucky that we got at least through the practicum because I mean without that Mm -hmm. experience I don't think I'd know anything you know what I mean yeah like we needed that excuse me but hands-on so that worked out to our benefit thank goodness but Mm-hmm. I don't know how we're going to get our hours. We have to get somehow that covered. So that's going to be the tough part, the clinical hours, getting the hospitals to be flexible. Mm-hmm. If you're going yeah. to med surge during the first half, pack yeah. a three course meal. Try <laughs> 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 for, for 24 hours, bye Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually I'm actually looking into getting a bento box for like <laughs> med surge. Oh my god. <laughs> so I can no, have I'm like I'll have joke my joke breakfast joke. on the way, then I'll have like a little snack section, and then I'm gonna have my little lunch section, and then I'm gonna have my dinner section. <laughs> <laughs> I know literally by the time you leave the house and get back, it's like, you know, then you gotta go back the next day. Oh, we're gonna be tired. <laughs> I well, know. Yeah, but I start losing my it. mind the next semester. You know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <okay>. Sione, <laughs> you were sharing something. Um, oh, Letty, <laughs> did you get to say everything you wanted to say about the um, heart stuff? Sorry, my brain started getting the migraine, so now we're mm-hmm. starting to get. I'm stuff coming back. Hold on. Stuff and things. Going on. Uh, some of the things that I didn't go over that I think people should know is the chart or the table in chapter twenty nine that talks about the medications. Yeah. Oh God, I can't believe we forgot that. I know you're right. That's super important. What you want me to find the page on that? Yes, please. And do that. I, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to go back and, and look at all these drugs and go write them out, and then I didn't do anything, so that that didn't oh. work out. Yeah. <laughs> and I forgot about them. So the drugs can be found. It's table 29.1. This is great. Mm-hmm. Sione, mm-hmm. we're talking about uh, making sure we know the drugs, the medication class, the names, the action, the indicated rhythm. Uh, and it's great because the charts are there and it tells you what it's used for. Oh. It's used for AF or mm-hmm. AFL. It's used for ST or AF. Specific drugs mm-hmm. or specific types of rhythms. That's found on page mm-hmm. 566 and page 567 in the Hoffman book. 567 oh, okay. in Hoffman book for those who are listening. Mm-hmm. So, God then, um, so weird. For those there's really- another table also in oh. the chapter that talks about the difference between cardioversion and defibrillation. Oh, yes. So that's know right. the difference between the two. That is, I remember that. Thank you so much. That is page, yep, tw- uh, 572, and it's table 29.3. So mm-hmm. page 572. So page. It goes over cardioversion and defibrillation, and the differences. Mm-hmm. Good points. Um, do you want to just give us a quick synopsis, Letty, about what that, the differences are in like one sentence? For those uh, who, do you remember? <laughs> you don't. It's okay. I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let us right. tie. Are we done with heart? <laughs> do you want to let Sione go over whatever she was? Um, you were talking about um, oh, okay. you know, carditis and all that good jazz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or bad um, jazz, technically speaking. So, <laughs> I'm gonna look to see if there's anything interesting that I um, want to donate to the um, gods. So. Okay, so for infective endocarditis, it says, okay, so clinical manifestation. So for clinical, manifesta- med- clinical manifestations of IE include um, something, it's something called Osler's nodes, O-S-L-E-R-L-E-R apostrophe S. So this okay. is when there mm-hmm. are red painful nodes on the pads of the fingers and toes. And there's also something called Janeway lesions. These are red, painless spots on the palms and soles. And are and, these for, you said, uh, endocarditis? Uh, yeah, infective endocarditis. Oh, wow. So that's, those are symptoms, like signs of symptoms that show up? Just to mm-hmm. make sure I understand? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, and also for infective endocarditis, you'll see the patient have splinter hemorrhages, which are tiny blood clots that run vertically under the nails. Oh, Oh. really? 
Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. What chapter was that again? It, um, okay, so this one. Sorry. It, oh, it's okay. Um, it's the cardiovascular chapter. Let me see which one exactly. Oh, is it in like the vascular it's like section? chapter 30, right? Is it chapter um, 30? Let me verify. Cardiac disorders. There's the vascular one, I think, is yeah. in, that is 31. Yeah, it's chapter 30. Oh, what is chapter 30? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. I don't think it's a, it's important to know the epidemiology because I watch a lot of med search videos and they all say, they don't say med epidemiology. They don't say study that. They say study the signs and symptoms, the patient education, uh, clinical manifestations, diagnostic tests, um, the treatment. The both, both, um, I have oh, to give you guys one warning. Uh, one of the graduates told me epidemiology was important. So yeah. oh, it might okay, be. Good. I just want to give you a warning really quick. Um, I meant to send that. I cannot believe I did not send that out. Never get sick. You get stupid when you're sick. You don't remember to do anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to copy and paste what he wrote me, and then I'm going to send it to you guys. I might just okay. like, out, like the jokes, but like, <laughs> other than that. Does anybody have told you this? What's that? Does, any, uh, does anybody know off the top of their heads or can explain to me what epidemiology is, basically? Uh, <laughs> I can Google it. Epidemiology okay. is... Yeah, help us out, Sione. Go ahead. Um, it is okay. So, it's the origin of a disease. But okay, I'm gonna double check too. I know. Okay, so that's epidemi being lost between it's like epidemiology, pathophysiology, and I'm like, nah. nah. <laughs> the branch of the physiology is like the physiology of that pathology. Mm -hmm. You all just start it's, rhyming together with the ologies and then I get lost and, you know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I know with patho, we have to look at enzymes and chemicals mm -hmm. and hormones and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got it, so, Sam. I'll let you take um, it. Yeah, it's the branch of medicine which deals with the incidence, distribution, and possible control of diseases and other factors relating to health. So, incidence, distribution and control of the disease. Okay. Oh, so that's basically, yeah. basically when they're breaking it down, like what's causing it, how do you fix it? That is the epidemiology. It's just put in more layman's terms. So how just, it spreads. Yeah. So, so there we go. So, so at least now we know that we're solving it, even though we didn't realize mm -hmm. we were with that big fancy <laughs> group behind it. Okay, well, you know, we're on the right path. We're getting there. All <laughs> 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 uh, right. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go now. All okay, right, Sione, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I feel you. And best of luck. With the classes. Thank oh, thank you. So you. And yeah, Letty, good luck. Yeah. yeah thank thanks. you so much. And Letty, do you, are you ready mm -hmm. to go now too? Did you get everything out that you wanted to share? Uh, I think that's it. You think that's it? Okay. All right. So are we ready to wrap this puppy up? Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Thank you so much, you guys, for contributing. You did a fantastic job, seriously. Mm -hmm. Lots lots oh, of work, thanks. lots of help. It was awesome. This will probably end up being two different uploads because it got split in the middle. So, um, uh -huh. so, yeah. So for those of you who are wondering where to look, you know, wait, that probably should have been said in the first video. Look, look down at the other uploads <laughs> to find the rest. So <laughs> everybody have a wonderful night, and thank you so much for stopping by. I know Jen wanted to stop by, so she, she texted when we were here. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then oh, I just wanted to yes. say, you know, remind people, if you want the resources that I'm sending everybody, let me know, email me yes. to my email. So look, using my name. Okay. But it's the number two. There's three different emails under my name. <laughs> Mine that I use has the number two in it. Do not email <laughs> the one with a one or without a number. Oh my god! Because I will not get it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, you know that that we both have signed up. Siona and I have both signed up. So just throw us in the loop, and then for anybody <laughs> else out there who's listening, uh, email Letty. <laughs> yes, and I would. Uh, whenever you e uh, upload videos, I would like notification. When you yes, I would do that. 
I will do that. Um, I will send that out to everybody then because, uh, you know, like I said, I wasn't sure how much everyone wanted to get spammed, but you know what? At the end of the day, who cares? If they don't want to get spammed, they can mute me. No, wait, <laughs> actually, on YouTube, I can like press the little subscribe thing to get yes. your notifications, right? There you go. You probably subscribe to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. You got it. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Sure. All right. Everybody Bye. have a good night. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.